Looking back, one of my biggest regrets was If you ask me to compare the rent, I was paying $20 per month for a studio in downtown San Francisco. To be honest with you, I never expected my first full-time job to have a salary that's Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening everyone. Welcome to my channel if you're watching my video for the first time. And welcome back to my channel if you watch my video on a day in the life of a quant. Thank you so much for making that video hit 10,000 views. As promised, I am filming this video to answer all of the questions listed below in the comment section of that video. In case you haven't watched it, please feel free to click the link over here. Without further ado, let us get started. Before I start answering the questions, I just want to highlight two things. The first thing is that all of the answers that I'm giving in this video are my personal opinion. I'm only representing for myself and not for anyone else. The second thing is that I am answering the questions based on when the questions were posted. Okay, we can finally get started with the first question. <laughs> Hi, I'm a senior study finance and business analysis and currently I am working as a data analyst consultant. I like quant, but I was unsure how to break into it. Can you show me the pathway? Thank you. Thank you for your question, first of all. I think it's a great question. Because three or four years ago, I was basically wondering about the same thing. What is the right pathway to become a quant? After two years of work experience, I have to say my current answer is that there is no particular pathway to follow to break into the quant industry. I've seen quants from drastically different backgrounds, from math to biostatistics, from computer science to astrophysics. So there really isn't just one single way to become a quant. But I have to say, if you're looking from the skills perspective, then you need to acquire certain skills to become a quant. If I'm generalizing from the common characteristics that I've seen from the quants in the industry, all of them possess very solid math and finance skills. They have great intuition and sense about the market, and they have very strong ability in coding. I can also share a little bit about my own pathway on how I became a quant. For me personally, I've always been interested in data, building models to find patterns from noisy data sets. I really enjoy problem solving and I'm genuinely interested about the financial market. For my bachelor's degree, I double majored in mathematics and economics. And after some internship experiences in the banking industry, I knew that I wanted to go into finance. So I applied for financial engineering programs for my grad school. I got into one of my dream programs and then I applied for a summer internship. After my summer internship, I got a return offer and then I started my first job as a quant. Just to give you a data point if you're interested. But again, I really don't think there is one certain pathway that you must follow. There are several ways to get there. So what I recommend doing is if you have friends who are quants or even alumni or family members, then you can start networking with them to hear about how they got to where they are right now. Now onto the second question. I don't have financial engineering, but rather financial mathematics and actuarial. Is my background sufficient to do quant job? I thought the employer always preferred math PhD to do quant job. Thank you for your question. I really don't think you need a PhD degree to become a quant. There are people who have bachelor's degrees and are doing so well in the quant industry. Based on my experience referring and interviewing candidates, I definitely find people with higher degrees and more certificates more likely to get selected from the resume round. But once you pass the resume round and you move on to the interview loop, the interviewers actually don't look at your academic background as much as your hard and soft skills. Employers are definitely more likely to hire someone who has a master's degree, has great market sense, and is a quick learner compared to a math PhD who is very hard to work with and doesn't really understand financial market concepts. The point is, if you really aspire to become a quant, then start doing your research today and start learning the relevant skills needed for the job. It really doesn't matter if your skills are self-taught or school-taught. In my humble opinion, being passionate about something doesn't necessarily bring that thing to you, but it will definitely help you get closer to it. So don't think too much, just go for it. I hope that answers your question. Okay, the third question. Is a master's in statistics a good degree for quant finance? Or do firms tend to hire MFE or quant finance master's program folks more? To give you a quick short answer, it's yes for the first part. A master's degree in statistics is definitely a good degree for quant finance. A lot of the times during your interviews, you will get tested on your statistical knowledge. So having taken relevant statistical courses will definitely help you prepare for those interviews. 
Like what I've mentioned earlier, I personally know Kwans from very different backgrounds with bachelor's degrees, financial engineering degrees, PhD degrees in different areas. So it really doesn't matter what your academic background is as long as you possess all the skills needed for the job. Number four, how can I get a job as a Kwan in SF? I earned my financial engineering degree in Colombia and currently I am residing in Los Angeles. The first step that I recommend doing is to start applying for jobs in San Francisco. Always keep an up-to-date version of your resume and apply to as many firms as possible, not just your dream companies. Looking back, one of my biggest regrets was I did not apply for a lot of firms for my summer internship. I remember my classmates bragging about how they applied for over 50 firms and how they got a lot of offers. Later, I found out that you really lose nothing when you apply for a bunch. But really, what you need to do first is just to put yourself out there in the market to let the recruiters, employers, and your future colleagues see your resume. You can also make use of your alumni network if they are working in the quant industry. You can reach out to them, schedule a coffee chat, and then ask them about how they got to where they are. And once you build that connection, you can also ask them for a referral if they're willing to give you one. Another key thing to note is that before you submit your resume for any of the companies, make sure that you have your friends and family proofread your resume to ensure that there are no grammar mistakes and it does highlight relevant experiences for this job. If any one of you would like to see a video on how to polish a resume, you can leave a comment below and if I see enough interest, I can perhaps film another video on how to polish your resume based on a few sample resumes. Question number five, why live so far away from your office? Cheaper real estate. First of all, great observation. I'm glad that you noticed how long my commute was. I originally lived in the city and my previous commute was 10 minutes on foot. But because of the pandemic, I was working from home the whole time. So I didn't have to go into the office at all. Sorry to say that, but the pandemic really transformed the city to a very unpleasant place. So I decided to move to a place with better scenic view if you ask me to compare the rent, I was paying $2,700 per month for a studio in downtown San Francisco in 2020. And I was paying $2,500 per month for a junior one bedroom in the video that you were seeing previously. It was definitely cheaper and more spacious to live a little bit far away from the city. But if I factored in the gas price as well as the parking fees, then it actually cost more. Question number six, may I know from where you completed your master's in financial engineering? Of course, I graduated from Carnegie Mellon University's computational finance program. The reason I chose that program was there are two campus locations. The first one is Pittsburgh, which is the main campus. You can also choose to be on the New York campus, which is what I did. If anyone is interested in learning about how to pick the right financial engineering program, please leave a comment down below. And again, if I see enough interest, I can perhaps film another video. Question number seven, what is salary? Hmm, that's a juicy question. To be honest with you, I've never expected my first full-time job to have a salary that's six-figured. Because I've signed a contract and it's legally binding that I don't disclose my personal salary but I can give you a wage band on how much people were making from the program that I graduated from. That's public information that you can find on the school website and my personal data point is also included in there so you can have a better sense. Here is a table called full-time employment compensation. As you can see, this is based on surveys from 85 students who graduated from the class of 2020. The base salary has a mean of $108,846. The median is about 110 k The minimum is 36 k and that represents a salary outside the United States. The maximum is $175,000. You can also look at the signing bonus. I just want to quickly comment on something. This is salary based on different job titles. Sometimes you get a position as a quant research analyst. Sometimes you can get quant research associate or even vice president if you have enough years of experience. So I think the mean and median numbers are more descriptive. Question number eight, do you have weekends off from work? Yes, I did have weekends off from work. But I also have to tell you that during the very first year when I first started, I didn't have a great work-life balance. But I blame it largely on me because going into the job, I thought there were so many things for me to learn. 
I just wanted to absorb and learn as fast as possible from colleagues on my team who already had so much experience. So back then I stayed pretty late during work days and also worked on the weekends. But later I realized your career is like a marathon instead of a sprint. You're not going to run for just two or four years, but rather 20, 30 years. So having a good body and good mental health is so important. And also as you progress, you will get more familiarized with your job. You will be more efficient and learn how to multitask during your day-to-day -day work. The last question, how much time did you spend on your car? Based on what you were seeing in the video, I was spending about 45 minutes from my place to the office and back home I was spending about one hour because the evening traffic is slightly worse than the morning traffic because I leave really early. And those are historical data because I've changed both my work location as well as my living location. Now I don't spend that much time anymore. Well, that wraps up all the questions and answers. Thank you so much for listening to the very end. I hope this video helped answer your questions. In case you have more questions, please leave a comment below. And I've noticed that some of you are watching my video from Canada, from Singapore, India. I never expected my video to reach you guys. And it's a pleasure to get to meet you in this way. Thank you so much for your support and I hope you enjoy a great day.